Hello everyone, Daryl Willis with EEM here. As Christmas approaches, I wanted to give you the gift of a poem, one I hope will touch you as it has touched me. This spoken word piece was written by my dear friend Jason Pagel from Brentwood, Tennessee. During this Christmas season, I'd like to share it with you as a reminder of what this is all about. And a shout out to Jason. Thank you, my friend, for these beautiful, beautiful words. Presents, packages, parcels, packaging. What do you give to the person who seems to have everything? Slender fingers slip across clear tape and tear patterned paper. Bows fall silently to the ground. Boxes or bags are opened with anticipation, building both in the one who gives and the one who receives. A shocked look, a smile, the expected reaction, regardless of whether the gift brings true satisfaction. Polite gratitude or genuine appreciation, sometimes it seems hard to tell the two apart. What do you give to the person who seems to have nothing? Is it possible the answer is one and the same? Desires, wishes, lists that we make, at the heart of it all are humanities at stake. What is the longing of each human being? What is the gift we all wish we were seeing? For the one in the darkness, the answer is light. For the one who is blind, the answer is sight. In the desert, it's water. To the hungry, it's bread. And life is the craving rising up from the dead. To the tired, it's rest. To the lost, it's a guide. To the discouraged, it's one in whom they confide. Well, a shiny new toy, the latest and the greatest, they don't satisfy the rich anymore, then they can satisfy the needs of the poor. So you can spend until your pocket is empty and then some. But the way to a person's heart is both simpler and more costly than that. From the wealthy to the starving, our need is the same. Our longing for stuff is just a cover, a game. It's presence, not presence, for which we all long. Listen closely. <laughs> Press in tight. The difference between the two may make all the difference. He had it all. He left it all. He made himself nothing as a gift wrapped not in extravagantly adorned paper, but in ordinary cloths, laid not under a sparkling tree, but in a manger, a trough. He was and is the present simply because he was and is present. He showed up. He was here. He is here. Emmanuel, God with us, God present. He was God's present because he was God present. He gave not of what he had, but of what he was. He gave himself. The presents brought to him by wandering kings were nothing compared to his presence. And in coming, he reminded us that what we all long for is not presents, but presence, his presence. For the one in the darkness, he is the light. For those who are blind, he is their sight. In the desert, he's water. To the hungry, he's bread. And he is the life rising up from the dead. To the tired, he's rest. To the lost, he's a guide. To the discouraged, he is one in whom they confide. He came to that which was his own but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received, to those who believe on his name, he gave the right to be called children of God, and that is a gift indeed. Through his presence, we are welcomed, and not just we who shop in designer stores. In fact, his presence seems offered most especially to the least and the poor. Shepherds were among the first to hear of this gift. His presence was given to the untouchable, the seemingly unlovable. The lepers felt his touch. The children found his lap. The sinners found him at their table, even while those outside scowled that he would so freely dole out presents like that. He came that we might live. And he came that we might give his presence and our presence to everybody. Because the kind of present that we all long for can't be express mailed. You have to show up. It has to be given in person. 
What do you give to the person who seems to have everything? What do you give to the person who seems to have nothing? The answer may be one and the same, presence.